hand, or I guess if I have to mute you, I'll jump back in. <laughs> I, I guess you'll be jumping in every so often. <laughs> okay, everyone, uh, good afternoon. Welcome to um, Collision Hub. Um, uh, trying to help out with this coronavirus. So uh, Collision Hub has decided to uh, put out a bunch of um, training videos uh, uh, encompassing probably a lot of the departments in the shop, anywhere from management to sales to marketing to uh, uh, technician training, um, equipment purchases or sales, equipment type um, uh, uh, equipment needed for a shop and then obviously estimating what we're up to today and uh, I'm here today to go over uh, uh, accessing the OEM repair data or repair information for uh, collision repair shops which <clears throat> is one of the three uh, most important things you have to do prior to ever touching a vehicle. Um, the most important thing that you have to do uh, comes down to three main things and that's one is you have to scan the car uh, prior to starting repairs two is you have to um, measure the vehicle prior to starting repairs and then the third one is look up, up the uh, look up all the repair data that you're going to need for that vehicle and I try to pick a couple of vehicles today we're actually going to go live on to WIS and I want to show you something in WIS uh, with Mercedes-Benz. Um, the reason I picked WIS for this one is because they have one page to link to everything. And uh, Chris and myself, Jason, and uh, Mark Olson, depending on which one of us were together at the time, the, the three of us, uh, have numerous videos on looking up OEM repair information that's available on YouTube. So if you guys want, you could search uh, Collision Hub Repair University in YouTube and then put in a manufacturer. Uh, Mercedes-Benz, uh, Volkswagen, which also is similar to Audi. Um, we did Subaru. We did Chevrolet. So we did a bunch of different companies, and you can see how their websites work. We even had uh, one where we made Kristen do BMW, and she had to look up everything. And, you know, she really kind of like wrote that, that program, and we helped her out with it as we went along. So she actually got to really learn it. So um, let's go through some of this uh, accessing repair information. Let's start at the main area here. Um, the three database systems um, have updated their, their information and their P pages as of lately. Uh, a lot of times they'll put something in bold, which is like auto text. CCC and, and Mitchell seem to be putting a, a highlight in blue. And this is all due to the DEG. And the degweb.org is put together by SCRS, ASA, and S, um, AASP. Um, and they have Dan who runs that. And basically, if you have a problem with a, a vehicle repair, something doesn't seem to um, make sense in the repair information, or there's no labor time or no paint time on a part that actually is painted, you can send an inquiry in. And uh, there's a process for doing that. I think we even have a video on um, YouTube that actually talks about how to put an inquiry in. And how these things get changed is because you guys put in inquiries and on the DEG website, you can get all three of the database P pages uh, very, very quickly. So this is from uh, Motors, which is CCC and on page G9 on the uh, left hand upper side of the page, they have labor, labor time premise continued. And if you look down the second blue, uh, a highlighted area or the second one written in blue is repair information, retrieval, lookup. That's not an included item. So right there in the P pages, it tells you it's not included. And obviously you'd be able to charge the consumer for this. Keep in mind, we charge the consumer, not the insurance company. Now, CCC and audit techs have a couple of different things, uh, the way they write them up and the way they go over it. And um, here in audit techs, uh, somebody had sent in on request uh, 12442, and it actually says here, does the DM, uh, DBRM uh, state if research OEM re uh, repair procedures as well as OEM subscription course is not included? Um, suggested for the um, change of this documentation, accessing OEM research is not a listed operation. At the top here, under inquiry resolution, it says here that we have reviewed your concern and 
audit text labor procedures and any labor re related to research and or investigation of the OEM EPC and or service information is not included in audit text provided labor values. Additionally, any relative OEM subscription costs are not included in parts nor labor values provided. So there's right from audit text that says, yeah, it's not included. So that, that, that'll help you guys out. And the inquiry number for that is 12442. So you might want to write that down, print out a picture of this and, you know, be able to have it at your fingertips. Now, Mitchell's another one that also came up with um, an answer when the question was asked. And down at the bottom here, database says Mitchell and the inquiry summary is, if the labor to purchase OEM subscription and research necessary to repair vehicles documents after a collision to fix the vehicle uh, included in any of the repair times listed. So it suggests up at the top, um, this is their response. It says, thank you for your inquiry. The procedure page enhancement requests will be taken under consideration for future updates. Labor associated with purchasing an OEM subscription is not factored into any published labor allowances. So it's a little ambiguous, that answer, in my opinion, and hopefully they're going to work on it. But the more times you guys send in a complaint or, excuse me, an inquiry about this, it becomes a complaint about it. So guess what? Maybe that'll get printed in the next update of material that they do, and um, you'll have that in there. So uh, I would suggest you write into Mitchell. I would even write in about Autotex because Autotex gave you, you know, uh, um, an inquiry number, which was the... Uh, the 12442, and this one is uh, 13388. Uh, Autotex is a little more solid on what they said versus the ambiguity or ambiguity in what the way they answered from Mitchell. So my suggestion is, is you get both to, you know, answer it a little bit better. You know, 30, 40 inquiries about the same thing is going to make them have to make a decision and change something. So that's my suggestion to you guys. So basically what it came down to, and I checked this with Danny, none of the three database providers are, are, have allowances in there for the time to look up the repair information or to even charge or get reimbursed for the amount of money that it costs you to purchase that repair information. So how do we find the OEM repair information links? And I, I know uh, I see a bunch of names on here that I recognize from Facebook, um, you know, the Collision Repair Technicians United page and uh, people have come to our class and asked us questions. And there's a lot of bad information as we know out there. It's almost becoming a joke. Sometimes I see some of the answers from some of you guys here are similar to what me and Kristen have given over the years uh, to these guys. You know, why not, why not ask Starbucks what they think uh, if you're going to ask on this page? So um, what I did was is I went online and I got every single link to every single repair page uh, for each one of the manufacturers, uh, free and the ones you have to pay for. So um, if you belong to ICAR, have taken ICAR classes, um, you can get through to the uh, RTS. And on the RTS, they have OEM information. So that'll give you a, a, a page with all the OEM um, emblems from each one of the cars. And you can click on that. It takes you to a different page that gives you some information ICAR has looked up about the, the, uh, the OEM. Uh, inquiries uh, to ICAR about that OEM repair procedures or information about that OEM. The link to not only the the car site, the selling site for the cars, but also gives you the site for um, the collision repair or even mechanical if they have it separate. And ICAR has gone ahead and they've given out uh, videos on actually you know, how to access and pay for to get online for that. So it gives you a quick little tutorial on how to get through their um, information, making up a password and username. And like I said, we have a bunch of videos on YouTube. You guys can go look up in the Collision, uh, uh, the Repair University on Collision Hub's page in YouTube. OEM One Stop is similar to uh, what ICAR offers, where they give you links to all the OEM uh, um, pages for it. So as we go along here, um, and I put the companies that are related to each other in one line, so I don't have 40 screens on here. So Acura Honda, they both go to techinfohonda.com, and um, you click on the link and just go right there to their page and sign up for it. It's a pay site. Alfa Romeo, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Fiat, and Ram. Um, they're all on, um, on the uh, Mopar Repair Connect. 
and this is um, you know uh, uh, what you'll get for uh, free, which is the uh, PDF manuals and stuff. You do have to join with a username and a password, but it's free. Then to get the hyperlinks to work and get more repair information, well, then you would go to the Tech Authority uh, for Alfa Romeo, Chrysler, uh, Jeep, uh, Fiat, and Ram. And no, uh, uh, Maserati is not included in that. Uh, Audi, Audi has Irwin, um, dot Audi, uh, USA dot com, and you'd have to pay for that site. That gives you all the Audi information. Yes, Audi, uh, Irwin, and Volkswagen, uh, uh, Volkswagen uh, Irwin are both separate. So uh, they're completely separate on those. So you'll have those. Uh, BMW uh, and Rolls Royce use the same BMW tech info. Uh, Mini Cooper's on a different page. Buick. Buick, Cadillac, Chevrolet, and GMC. The free is the uh, genuine GM parts link. And then the pay site that, once again, the hyperlinks, um, all the different pages, uh, all work through the hyperlinks, which is a lot easier to access. And it has all the information, mechanical body, electrical, electrical charts, uh, um, warranty issues, stuff like that. It's a, it's a better site. Uh, more inclusive of everything, which would be the AC uh, Delco, uh, TDS.com. Uh, Ford Lincoln, this is pretty long, uh, this link I got from them, but it is Motocraft Service. So Motocraft Service is going to give you all the hyperlinks and all the information for the Ford Lincoln vehicles. Uh, keep in mind also, they give you the resets um, or the aiming procedures that you'll have to do if you're doing electronic stuff or if there's an issue with something electronic in the vehicle or one of the computer units. Hyundai has a lot of mechanical information, pretty much almost no collision information, unfortunately, in this country uh, as it stands right now. Uh, Infinity is at infinity-techinfo.com. And anyone who's taken the uh, Nissan Infinity classes from uh, Mike Anderson knows, um, you know, there's a ton of information in those pages. So that's very important that you, um, you, you get on that side if you're working on an Infinity. Uh, JLR or Jam uh, Jaguar Land Rover share the same site, uh, depending on which way you go through, is going to be topics, uh, dot Jaguar, uh, JLR, or you can click on Jaguar or, or um, Land Rover once you get there. Uh, Kia, uh, Kia has some tech information too. Uh, they do have a lot of uh, procedures for the vehicles for um, uh, collision repair, so you can click on theirs. Once again, another pay site you have to go to. Lexus Toyota Scion or, or the TIS uh, program from them is very, very informative. There's a lot of information that's in there. We actually did a show on the uh, Lexus Toyota Scion page. We, we picked a Toyota that we did. Uh, so there's a lot of information that the first two or three screens you actually deal with have a, a ton of information about the car. You can even get the build sheet. So if you're ever wondering, uh, does a car have uh, lane departure? Does a car have... Uh, um, all around camera, does it have this trying to cruise control? Instead of walking back out to the car and trying to figure it out, it's right there on a complete list for you. Maserati's techinfo.maserati. Mazda's Mazda service. Mercedes-Benz is Star Tech Info for non-certified elite shops. Elite shops, we have to go through a different system now that they have us working on, so we're not going to be going through uh, – uh, Star Tech Info anymore. Actually, my, my passwords won't even work in Star Tech Info anymore. Uh, we have a different system that we go through. We got D7 numbers we use. Uh, Mini Cooper, even though it's a BMW product, BMW, Mini Cooper is going through uh, Mini uh, Tech Info. Mitsubishi has a website that does have a lot of repair information for uh, collision repair. Finishing up here, we have Nissan, similar to the Infinity one I just spoke about. Porsche Info. Well, if you're a Porsche certified shop, you know you have the PWIS and you have your certificate, and it's a real, to be honest with you, a pain in the ass for us because it's only locked into one computer. If you pay for the site, um, it's a little bit easier to use, actually. Funny enough, you can go on any computer and use your password and username. Um, but when you're locked into one computer and we have training we have to do through uh, our PWIS number for PAC. So um, you guys will go to techinfo2.porsche.com and add the rest of this information in there or just copy the hyperlink. Uh, Subaru, 
Uh, many of you are Subaru uh, certified, and I've seen you guys talk about Subaru. So Subaru has techinfo.subaru.com. They have a lot of repair information about their cars. Um, if you look at their pictures and if you've been on the new GM website, they're very similar in their look. They're actually giving you some colored areas uh, for riveting or for gluing or for welding. And so it really makes it, um, you know, maybe catches your eye. You kind of get used to the way it looks. Uh, Tesla has uh, service.tesla motors that you'll have access to or the Tesla toolbox you'll get involved with if you're on a Tesla program. Volkswagen is very, very similar, almost identical to Audi with the Irwin. And then you have Volvo, which is volvotechinfo.com. Uh, That'll be working for you. So this is um, all the sites that you have uh, for these particular uh, companies. And, and then you guys want, you can obviously use uh, all data. All data has gotten a little bit better with their new website, the way they're working it to uh, get access to the repair information. They're splitting it up nicely on the screens. Uh, if you have a problem, you can't find repair information, then you would uh, send an inquiry in. My, my personal opinion is, is always use the OEM repair site for repairs. Um, you can use an all data or a third party if you want to use it for a quick lookup if you're writing an estimate. But I'll be honest with you, and there's some people out here right now on this screen that I can see here. I've done estimate reviews for you guys. You've sent me estimate reviews that you, you've paid me to review for you. And I'm coming up with stuff that you had to do on the vehicle if you're repairing it and you're like, oh, how do you know that? Well, because if you look at the repair information from the manufacturer, it tells you this, this, and this. Oh, well, that wasn't in what I looked up. Well, you need to look up the repair information. And that's the unfortunate thing. The, the OEM site's always the best. Um, all that has gotten better and it's pretty quick for you to use for estimating. But um, outside of all that, I would only use the OEM sites. You, we also have another uh, situation for those who don't know now, Kristen will talk about this a little bit at the end. I know she's talked about it before. Uh, we have a thing called Picatech, which is basically like phone a friend to get a little assistance. So we might be able to guide the shop technician or the uh, estimator through a process of what to look for, or where to look for it. And we'll talk about that later. So I made a video uh, about a Oh, I'm going to say about a month and a half ago, two months ago, before this whole coronavirus thing started up. And um, I showed a, a picture and then a video of about nine, nine and a half inches of paper uh, sitting on a desk. And um, it was funny because everyone was like laughing and stuff like that. And I even had one or two guys who who work at a dealership who says, oh, you don't need that, rep that much repair information. I was like, yes, you do. And we argued back and forth. And it's like, you got to realize I printed this out to be brought into quarters, kind of like eyewash and surprise everybody and show everyone the manuals. And um, out of the uh, pages there, I only needed a few of them, but you can see here, there's all the manuals listed out. And it was funny. I posted a similar picture online. And you know what everyone, you know, the biggest comment was, my God, those clips are huge. Where'd you get those from? And I actually have one of the clips here. So you guys can see it. Hang on, hold it up. <laughs> Here's one of the clips. And everyone's like, oh my God, that clip's huge. Where'd you get that clip from? Not, oh my God, look at all that paperwork and what you have to read. That didn't come up. And this was a rear body panel. Um, a rear body panel and bumper assembly. So basically, in these pictures from the um, Audi, um, it's number one, the entire assembly there, plus, uh, well, the whole rear bumper assembly. So the right, the left side of the picture there, basically, it's almost everything there. And then uh, number one on the right-hand side, number two comes with that. And then uh, three, four, and five were, were repaired as well as number six were just cleaned up for well damage. So that's really the process of it. And then you had to blend both quarter panels and stuff like that and take doors off. So as we, um, we, we went through this repair, um, here's the manuals I had to access. Now I print, remember I printed them out just to bring them to court because I got to show where they came from. But we printed up body repairs, passenger vehicle, electrical equipment, general information. General information, body repair, and body collision repair. Repair manual communication, repair manual body exterior, interior, electrical equipment, and wheel and tire guide. Now, some of these pages only needed a few pages access, accessed. Some needed more. So of the eight manuals referenced, there was 2,375 pages total printed out that I printed. 
529 had to be read or referenced. So 529 pages. Now, my, my, my personal opinion is you would, you, you know, when you open up the pages, you write down the pages you need, you print the PDF and only print those pages you need and put those in the file because you know it's coming from Irwin. What you guys have to do is a little bit different than going to court, but I, I'm showing you what, you what you should do. You So you go on the Irwin page, you're in Audi, Irwin, or Irwin.Audi, and uh, you find the pages you want. You say, okay, I'm going to print this page to this page, save it to a document on uh, save to PDF or print to PDF. Now, the average read time, and I went online for this, depending on if you read fast or slow, is, uh, is anywhere between four to eight hours for 529 pages, depending on how many words per minute you can read. Now, I deducted time out for all the photos and the illustrations they give you versus the words. And I took a conservative. It's two to three hours of repair information on 529 pages that you'd have to do. Now, how much time it actually takes you would be up to you. Now, once again, this gets easier. The more you work on it, the more you go through it. I had to go through this thing and find all the information and write it all down and take time with it. Then I did it on another Audi. And once again, the Q5 is similar to the Q7. So now I went to go look up everything in the Q7 and it's almost identical, you know, how it's made up. So I was able to find the information quicker uh, because I, I've worked on these cars a lot. So as you get more and more used to working on the same type of cars, um, if you work on Subaru a lot, so you're into 20, 30 Subarus so far in the year, you start to learn where to look up this information. You also learn that basically um, the lane departure system, let's say in Subaru is the same for all the Subarus. So you kind of know which manual to look it up or where to look it up or where the information is. So you do get quicker at it as you go along so you can average your time out better. Now let's look at case study number two. This is a Toyota Camry. And um, this is a, um, a rad support on this car. So let's say somebody backed up uh, into the car and somehow, some way damaged the, uh, the rad support on this. And we're changing the radiator support. So we access to change the rad support. And I utilized, instead of going to TIS, I utilized uh, um, all data for this one. And you can see here where they have the um, hieroglyphics. They're showing you what the weld points are to be removed. They also explain to you what areas you're cutting off so you don't cut off something that you're not supposed to, what areas you need to, to cut off, um, what areas are bolted on. And then down here at the bottom, it was funny. Um, it says here, A, inspect fitting of the related parts around the new parts before welding. This affects the appearance of the finish. B, temporarily install new parts and measure each part of the new parts in accordance with the body dimensions diagram. So doesn't that tell you the manufacturer says you have to trial fit the parts and you have to remeasure the car, even though you already measured it when you pulled it or measured it before you started repairs. So you, you have the manufacturer that's helping you if you read. You have to read this information. They're actually telling you. GM will actually tell you that you have to put the door on prior to painting it to make sure the door fits properly on the car. So now we go to the next page. And again, they're giving us some more hieroglyphics and where these welds have to be. And it says, after applying top coat, apply anti-rust agent to the internal portion of the closed section of structural weld points. Install internal panel portion, you apply rust agent. Well, that would mean you'd have to put your corrosion protection, which dries, which would be something like epoxy coating. And uh, then you would actually have to spray anti-corrosion compound. And we did a whole class on that. Actually, Sean Collins came in with us. Um, and you guys can look that up too. And we went over corrosion protection. Uh, my, myself, Mark Olson, and, and Kristen, along with Sean Collins from 3M, we went over the whole thing. So it tells you right here, you have to apply corrosion protection and rust proofing. So the manual, the manufacturer is telling you what you have to do. So this is why it's so imperative that we look up the repair information on every single vehicle. Just because we think we know what we're doing doesn't mean that we're covering everything in there. And look at number D, 
or excuse me, letter D there. Uh, D says, measure dimensions before installing headlights. So it's telling you to measure again before you put the headlights in the vehicle. So you can see the manufacturer realizes the importance for redundancy to ensure that the vehicle is being repaired correctly. And they do give you dimensions here if you had to do tram gauge measurements, which with electronic measuring, you, you're going to probably do most of this with electronic, but you might have a couple of situations here where you might just want to take a tram gauge and check it out quickly and see what's going on. But they give you all that information. <clears throat> so what else would we have to access to change this bumper cover? Well, let's think about it for a second because we're not in a regular class. I'm not going to call on people to have this out, but all right. So the furthest most thing out on the car is what? The front bumper grill assembly. So where are my clips? How do I get the side of the bumper cover off? How many guys out there have ever worked on a bumper cover and you went to go pull it off and you broke the tabs on the bumper cover when you were and eyeing it because you didn't realize how to get the bumper cover off? Uh, we were down in Florida doing a class um, recently and we had um, Jake uh, Rodenworth was there and we had a bunch of different techs from across the country. So we had a Kia that was actually a rented car and we went to go take off the back bumper and I'm helping somebody take it off. And one of the guys said, Hey, be careful. It's like GM. These side clips are really, really difficult to get off. And one of the other techs said, Oh man, I work on these all the time. Watch this. And he grabs the bumper cover backwards with his hand on the side on the left hand side. And with his right, with his left hand, he hits the bottom of the bumper and the thing pops right off. No damage to anything. He says, this is how they, this is how you get them off, but they don't tell you that in the manual, but you got to go through that. What's another thing we're going to have to look at. Well, we're going to have to look up parking aids and ADAS systems. This car is fully loaded. We have a camera system in there. We have parking, uh, parking aids in there. We're going to have to look those up, correct? And find out what's going on. That. So that's another, another manual, another area you have to look up. Headlamps, fog lamps. We're going to have to look up those. How do you aim those? You know, what's the process for aiming those? Are they, are they high-intensity uh, uh, high discharge lights? Are they LED lights? What's going on with these things? SRS information. Well, anyone who's ever worked on a Toyota know you got two satellite sensors on, on the RAD support. And now ask yourself this, and once again, I can't have a raise of hands on this, but with SRS and Toyota, what's the most important thing Toyota tells you? Think about it for a second. Think about it, and let's see if you're right. Every single vehicle that's been involved in a collision must have the passenger occupant weight sensor recalibrated or reweighed. They don't define what an accident is. Now I think changing a ride support is a significant accident, but they don't really clarify an accident. So basically you have to reweigh the passenger occupant weight sensor. If you remove the seat, loosen the seat bolts, if the seat airbag deployed, or if the car has been involved in an accident. So if you read the manual, you'll see that. Air conditioning condenser. Do we guess at how much Freon we put back in the car? Do we guess at what kind of oil we use in the car? Do we guess at what the torque specs are when you tighten those aluminum fittings back together? Something to make you think and look over and say, okay, well, what do I got to do with this condenser? Or what happens if the condenser has been open and came to your shop? Do we have to change the condenser that might be undamaged, but a line was broken and because the desiccant uh, uh, is open, the, the, the dryer is open, and it's got to be changed now because the desiccant can't be open for more than two minutes, three minutes. Radiator, coolant, bleed, vacuum the system. Well, what kind of uh, antifreeze do we use? How much antifreeze do I actually need? How do I bleed the system or, or vacuum the system to be able to bleed it? Well, that's in the repair information underneath the radiator coolant area. Fan assemblies, that might be fairly easy to take apart, but we'd still have to look at the fan assembly. Or we put the fan assembly in, it's not kicking on what it's supposed to. Now we're gonna go into electrical diagnostics. Air filter box. Air filter box has to come out of the way. It's blocking how you put the radiator in, uh, excuse me, the, rad, the, the radiator support. The, refer, the, the um, reservoir overflow bottles, how to drain those or bleed those out. Is it a reservoir bottle for the antifreeze or is it a, a, um, a, a surge tank that's off to the side? Because remember, a surge tank, if you open it up and it's under pressure, you're going to get sprayed with hot antifreeze. So you got to be careful of that. 
Fender assemblies. How do we take the fender assemblies off? What's the talking specs on the fenders? You know, the fender's got to come off so we can change this rad support. Wheels. The wheels have to come off so we can work on this vehicle, take off the splash shield, take off the rad support, put it back on. If we put it on the bench, we've got to take the wheels off. What's the torque specs on the wheels? It's got to reference the wheel manual. So I'm going to go to case study number three here, which is the Mercedes-Benz um, 205 car, which is, this is a C300. And um, I'm really only going to do, uh, I'm going to switch screens here in a second. But what I want to do is I want to go over just R&I in the bumper cover. How many manuals do you think we're going to need if we're actually going to R&I a bumper cover on a Mercedes-Benz? This, this is a pretty interesting thing to, to, to think about here of exactly what goes on um, in, in, in working on a car. So, you know, how many manuals do we think we're going to need to actually go through it? And um, I did the math for you. <clears throat> we actually have uh, on the 205, we actually have this install bumper, which is in a, a, a square box there, um, which is R and I bumper, but it comes out when you, when you print it to PDF, it says install bumper, uh, front bumper. It comes up with links on the Mercedes Benz page in hyperlinks to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different links just for that bumper cover, just to take the bumper cover on and off. So they got the general information on the impact absorber, star connect uh, diagnostics for fault memory, uh, connect the ground line cable, lower engine compartment lining, Mercedes-Benz star in the center, how to get that off, how to put the vehicle up and down on a, on a lift, notes on the pedestrian protection system, and rear end door or, or sliding roof section there that they have. So... What I did was is, um, this is my Zentry portal that I go to. So I click on WIS uh, Arsa Retail Factory stuff, and then we're gonna get to a different screen. So well, let me just uh, swap this out right now. And I'm gonna bring up, okay. Now uh, everyone can see the Mercedes, but let me just say, Kristen, you're seeing the Mercedes Benz page now? Just shake your head, you can, and you don't have to, Okay, good. Thank you. All right. So this is the Mercedes-Benz uh, WIS page, and you see the same page I see. I just go through a different area. All right. So up here, the first three digits of the uh, VIN will get put in by the, the, the manufacturer, and then you put the rest of the VIN in here, and then you would click, you know, enter, and then it comes up with a screen here that gives you all the different sections of Mercedes-Benz. And listen, everyone says Mercedes-Benz has got the hardest website. It's the most difficult. No, it's not. It's the most different. I'll tell you that much. It's not hard to use once you learn how they think and how they have everything laid out. It's actually, in essence, the easiest one to use once you learn how to use it because everything's hyperlinked. So you can't really get lost or screw it up. So in this case, I scroll down and we look for 88, which is the detach detachable body components, exterior flaps. Now from taking training courses at Mercedes-Benz, you get this beat into your head where the sections are. So I click on not everything. I just want to do general and bumpers. Then it opens this screen over here and I'm just going to click on repair information. So I go to click start search and it brings up a just front bumper. Or well, remove install front bumper. So I'm going to click on that. So as I click on this one, it'll bring up a whole bunch of different information. So I, hang on, sorry. Why is this giving me a hard time right now? Do I got to sign back into this? Yep. I'm sorry, guys. It lost the connection there for a second. Give me one second here. Uh, sorry about that. I had it set up to go, and I guess it sat too long, and now it's not coming through. So hang on here. And, uh, let me unshare that for a second. Bring that back up. Okay. So... I just like the fact that it said, hello, Lawrence. <laughs> hello, Lawrence. Hello. 
Your mom would be so proud right now. That, that well, you got to use your legal name sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm thinking, if she's watching, which I'm sure she is. So. Uh, I don't know if my mom's watching or not. Uh, my boy Lawrence. And wait till I give you, wait till I tell you this one when we're sitting together someplace. If you thought my other password was wacky, wait till you hear this whack password. Oh. Uh. Okay. I can't believe it got stuck on me. All right. I've read this document. Okay, good. All right, I'm sorry. I'm back up. You know, the problem with these websites is sometimes you're working on them, and if you leave them too long, they go ahead and they bounce you out. Right, let's go back to share. Okay, so is everyone seeing Mercedes Benz now? Okay, good. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. So let me just go back here. So I click on the bumpers, the repair. I click search. Okay, I click on the front bumper here. And you can see it opens a whole bunch of different aspects here. So I'm gonna click on this document here. And uh, that's the problem. You know, you're trying to share this screen and it's coming up. I gotta click okay for something. Hang on. Uh, stop share for a second. I gotta, sorry about this. I've read this document. Let me go back. I'm sorry about that guys. This I didn't test yet. For those who've ever used Wiz, when you click on some documents, it comes up, did you read this particular um, uh, show safety information? And unfortunately, it's in a separate open box, and it's not catching on this uh, thing, and I know this for next time. All right, so see where my cursor is. It says show safety information. That's about, you know, working on a car, wear the proper protection, uh, blah, 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 blah. All right, so now it comes up with remove install bumper. When you click up here, it just makes the document bigger, and we're working on the 205 model here. And um, as you scroll down here, it'll actually show you pictures of where the clips, bolts, nuts, screws are, outside temperature sensors, where the clips on the side of the wheel opening are, underneath the hood. This explains all your numbers, bumper, extension, rivet, left liner, right front liner. Um, you have underneath the hood area, shows you stuff underneath here, bumper, liner, pedestrian sensor, it tells you where everything is as you scroll through here. And it's some pretty cool pictures and our drawings, uh, shows you how to pop off the side over here. Shows you underneath here where all the clips are. All right, shows you how to, um, you know, with the vehicle with the Distronic Cruise Control, where the unit is back here. And notice the emblem is already taken off, all right? So now you get down here, this is where the writing is. So now it'll give you, this is the warning system here, and you can click on this, and this takes you to a completely different document. But as you go down, each one of the red ones are links that you're going to go to as far as, um, as, far as what procedure you'll need, okay? And as far as the gray, are not for, this is for model two, uh, 293, and we're not using that. But 205 model, we have a link. So it says open hood. Well, that seems pretty surprising, but the Germans felt that they needed you to open the hood. Next is discurrent, disconnect ground line from battery cable. Well, there's a document here that if you click on it, it'll take you to the hyperlink, and it's going to tell me read the procedure again. Okay, so I'm going to skip that first. Uh, I won't let me do that. Oh, man. Okay, hang on a second. I got to stop sharing. and hit OK. Sorry, fellas, I've read this document. Okay. So now I go back to the Shea here. So now I click that and it takes me to this document and it brings up how to disconnect the battery. But it also gives you now other links to general information on handing vehicles, a high voltage, notes on high voltage, gives you information here about the different parts of the battery or links to the battery, the blue area are for tools. So I'm gonna go back to the original document we were just at. So here's disconnect the battery. Now this is similar with remove the Mercedes-Benz star. 
This tells you how to take the star off, which is a clip and a, you know, you just kind of like twist it and that whole little, you know, cleared out plastic. I mean, that darkened out Mercedes Benz star pops right off. How to remove the engine compartment lining, how to detach the front engine compartment lining underneath or the, the, the underbelly pan. This will take you to the long wedge and dismantling tool. These links here take you to the bottom of the page. I'll show you the bottom of the page in a second. Detach the protective strips on the area of the bumper. Those you have to uh, purchase again. <clears throat> or be careful not ripping them, but the stickiness usually causes a problem. Uh, disengage bumper from the left fender and right fender. Detach electrical connector. Remember those numbers that we were showing before? Here's all the numbers here that go back up to the top of it. So you're going to be printing out these pages. I think it's about 15 pages total. Remove the screws. Again, they give you the, the, the tools you need. Feeler gauge also is going to be needed. So you go down this complete list. They ch say here, check uh, an impact absorber for damage. They tell you how to do this. If damage presented, replace an uh, impact absorber. Yeah, it's a, down here at 21 is calibrate the uh, 360 camera with diagnostic system. And here's a hyperlink to actually how to do that whole diagnostic system on that vehicle and how to do the diagnosis of it. And obviously you need the Zentry tool to do it, but it'll tell you the process that you need. So now we come down here and it gives us all the um, measurements or areas to measure uh, on the vehicle and what the dimensions are between them, plus or minus one. Uh, plus or minus 1.5, 2.5 millimeters is the distance. So this will give you all your gap measurements. And down at the bottom of every one of these beginning documents on Mercedes-Benz gives you the feeler gauge, the, the tool, or the wedge that you need for this. Sometimes there'll be a bench. You know, you'll need the bench. There'll be a side gantry there. So that's telling you it has to go on the frame bench system. So that's, that's the one nice thing about the Mercedes-Benz uh, system here. And uh, I'm just going to get out of this for a second and go back to my presentation. Uh, bring this back up. And, uh, share. Okay. Nope. Wrong one. Um, Rid of that. Okay, share. Screen two. Okay. And why did this get stuck again? Okay, why is my screen not coming back up to where I want it to? Sorry about this, guys. I don't know why this has uh, got a haywire on me all of a sudden. Hang on. There it comes. All right. Okay, we're back up. Okay, back to Mercedes-Benz. I'm sorry about that, guys. That, uh, that... That Mercedes-Benz website kind of screwed me up a little bit with this uh, taking the screen out and putting it back in again. So we saw how many different screens we needed. Now, let's say we want to get on to the um, – we want to put this on the damage report. And uh, I know a few people have asked about this and how we go about this. So on your damage report – and let me get that out of your way. I'm sorry. Make sure I got the right screen being shared here. Okay, good. All right. So I got the right screen being shown. All right. So uh, on a damage report, and um, I usually put it in vehicle diagnosis, or you could put it at the end of the repair information, um, at the, you know, in like miscellaneous area. But here we have here line number eight, uh, replace Audi Irwin information. There's a price and a labor time for looking up the repair information on that. Um, Here's another example of another estimate. Uh, this is a Tesla. And um, number seven, replace Tesla repair information toolbox. And there's a price and a, 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 you know, a, a labor time for entering that information. Uh, this is another one, Porsche. 
And the line number seven, replace Porsche PWIS information, uh, labor time and, and a price for that type of material and stuff. So, you know, you can see that there's a few examples here of um, the type of um, charges you can do or the way you would kind of set it up. I'm not telling you what to charge or, you know, how much to charge or how much labor time to do it, but, you know, charge for what you're actually doing and what it actually costs you to actually produce this. And uh, here's another one on a Lexus. And uh, line number six is replace Lexus TIS uh, access and uh, research information. And there's a price there plus a labor time. So um, hopefully this, uh, this class has helped you guys out uh, better understand, you know, exactly what is and uh, isn't there as far as what we need to do with the repair information as we go along and, and, and a little bit of how to look it up and stuff. I mean, I gave you an example of Mercedes Benz and the hyperlinks. Uh, GM is similar to this. Audi Irwin is similar to this. Even uh, Audi and Volkswagen Irwin are similar. Uh, if you're in the PDF section online, it'll actually give you hyperlinks to these other pages. So once again, it's important to go through the OEM repair information. Uh, like I said, you can use all data if you want to try and uh, um, uh, do it quickly for estimating. But as far as uh, collision repair technicians go and for the information you need to actually um, – calibrate things in the vehicle, you're going to need the repair site from the OEM. And it has a lot more information in there that you'd be surprised about. Uh, I'm going to ask Kristen to come in on with me on this one now from here on out to try and finish this up. I, I don't know. We're going to take questions or do something. What you yeah. tell me, Kristen. Yeah. So, so there's a couple things to keep in mind here as we, as we've gone through it, when you're talking about how you're going to estimate this, two things to keep in mind. Um, one, there's the fee. So that's, that's whatever, you know, if whatever system you're using, if you are, a shop that's not using the OE system, if you're using all data as a possible example, your fee may be different because it's not gonna be a daily access um, to the OE. We use all data here at Collision Hub and we use the OE website. So for us, it's, it's kind of a little bit of both. Um, but you do have a, a price for that, that access or whatever. I'm not a fan of, of repair procedures and estimating systems just because there's, there's some holes there. Um, that we find that you do. So you have the actual price of the, of the material itself um, to consider on your estimate. And then you may have two labor charges to think about. So um, when we work with shops, we see this kind of a couple different ways. You may have the labor charge associated with your research. So that's your estimator, your repair planner that had to go through all of it to be able to complete the estimate and to drop that into whatever server or system that you're using to share that. We know Larry shared that nine inch pile of, of documents. Well, I wouldn't want to print that out on a regular basis for every car in my facility. I'd have a huge paper expense and, and you know, I, that Greta girl would probably come over and kill me for killing the environment. So um, I like digital share of that. Now your second labor for that is going to be as you read through the P pages or the guide to estimating for CCC and the others, you will frequently see um, even in separate labor premises for specific parts or operations, they'll even write in there, refer to the OEM manual. So that's going to be your technician as well. So as a tech, once you've collected all this information, the tech has a review um, period to be able to make sure that they're repairing the car properly or they know where the cut measurements are, et cetera. None of that is factored into the labor time. So when it says labor premise does not include um, the OEM manual research and review, that's not just what they're talking about for the estimator, they're also talking about for that technician. So you may choose to have a single line entry that says like, you know, like Larry's got here that says, you know, I got $29.95 for my Irwin and we've got three hours of labor. You may, you know, you may want a line that says $29.95 for Irwin, three hours of labor for my estimator, and then a manual line entries, in trees or in tree, depending on the parts, that give a technician 0.1 or 0.2 or whatever to review prior to doing those operations as a, as a collision repairer, that would be a decision you would make. Um, I definitely want the technicians to review the paperwork and I want the labor time there for them because that's part of the repair and our estimating systems support that, that the review of the procedure or review of the processes and the procedures is not included in their labor times. Because they're saying it's not included, they're also telling us that it is an important step. Um, ICAR supports us on that as well. Um, and that it's not something you should just know. I mean, if it was just something we should know, it would be mentioned in the 
you know, by ICAR, it wouldn't be mentioned by the uh, estimating system. So um, definitely considerations. So we can open this up for questions. Yep. Um, if anybody's got it, you can unmute your mic and just ask your question if you want to, or you can, um, I'm going to get into the managed participants. Um, you can raise your hand or do whatever, um, or you can type it in the chat box. Did we scare everybody? Is anyone still here? <laughs> yeah, they're there. They're, okay, here we go. Uh, oh, oh I, I saw you. You already answered that. You were oh, no, I answered a question. Ah, uh, okay. Um, are there issues with estimating system repair manuals that are not updated frequently? Um, you know, here's the thing. I need to let people know. There are not, there are not shops, each estimating system. Um, CCC is a little different because they use Motor, which is a, a separate company. But our three estimating systems don't have research labs that are constantly researching the times um, that it takes to do collision repair. There's a lot of, of historical data that moves forward as vehicle changes happen. Um, a, a labor study can be done if there's a, a request or there's something that's of, of concern. I think Larry's probably participated in some labor studies um, I've done a couple in my year. I remember doing one on a Jaguar quarter panel replacement when we were arguing over it. Um, but, but as far as labor times being up, being updated, that's yeah, no. And that's why the DEG is so important. So when you pull something up and you're looking at the process in the procedures and you're looking at the estimating system, Ooh, look, I lost a hand. Um, and you go, Hmm, this doesn't add up. That's where Danny kicks in and uh, the DEG elevates that. And then they get an answer for us. And, Frequently, that answer, Larry, would you agree, is add more labor? Uh, yeah, you'd have to add more labor to it. Now, I would speak to Danny. And, and listen, if you're going to try and uh, – two things here. I mean, uh, let me go back real quick. With the OEM uh, – I mean, with the estimating systems, I don't believe in using the estimating systems for repair information. The manufacturers are usually pretty much up to date. If it's not, it's usually a mistake or a typo. And if they don't have a real collision repair training program manager that you can get in touch with, then please get in touch with Collision Hub and we'll try and talk to one of the companies out there that maybe doesn't have something or maybe you don't have access to Benz, Audi, Porsche. So get in touch with us. We'll get in touch with those people and make sure that that correction's made. As far as labor missing, I mean, I've, I've sent in over 150 of these things and I don't technically really work on cars anymore. And, um, if you're going to send it in, just don't make up a time. Uh, try and do a little time test study in your shop. Uh, try and figure out what you have there and, and, and um, what you actually had to do and try to explain it as best you can to Danny. Um, in some cases, you might have to videotape it. Um, in other cases, they'll just add the time accordingly. Uh, so you have to come up with a reasonable amount of time or, or something like that. I mean, uh, we had one a few years back on a a Honda Accord and there was a bracket on the upper rail that was towards the back that connected to the, um, to the cow panel. And we thought it came on the rail and it didn't, it came separately. And you know, when it came, it was like, okay, well, here's this part. It's $22. It's got to weld on. And, um, because I can't weld it on all of a sudden, uh, how do I take care of this? How do I do this? How do I work this through? And you know, what do I do with this? It's, it's gotta be painted too. So we gave a suggestion and they gave a, a, a pretty much almost the time we asked for it's you know you know uh, the two hours with the part already taken off and then uh another uh at another 0.4 plus 0.2 for the clear coat and they, they agreed with it so it wasn't that bad i mean the yeah. part was really tiny it wasn't that big. you're probably no no bigger than my cell phone totally you know so it was a really small part with four welds that was it yeah so you, you got to come up with a time you got to come <laughs> over it but the most important thing is and i think you bring this up now Kristen, is go to the deg bring it up yeah, yeah. So I did put that web page up there. So degweb.org. You can make an inquiry, or you can just research all the other inquiries that that people have done up there. So, um, but it is essential that you're reviewing that OE repair information each and every time on each and every repair, and it is time consuming for your estimators. A lot of them feel like it's slowing them down, um, and then it's time consuming for your um, for your technicians as well because they have to review that information again. Um, sometimes in, in its totality before they can even start disassembling or detrimming the car. There are lots of different things to do. And so they may also have to go back to that as reference several times during the repair. And that's not included time. It is recognized as something that needs to be done. And so that's something that your estimators need to be determining how you want to estimate that. Um, again, you can do lump sum. 
um, for you know your access cost and then your repair time for your, your research time for your estimators. You could come in and just do a second line under that and it says research time for technician to review prior to disassemble, assemble, or part panel install and put another hour over there for the technician. Or you can go in uh, right under those panels. So if you were doing a quarter and a rear body, you could put time in there to do that. Um, I'm a personal fan of two entries, one that recognizes my estimator's time and one that recognizes my text time. That's just, that's my preference. So Larry, it was good. I, it looks like you did such a good job. Um, no one has any questions or no one really wants to talk to us. I had one question on the tax. I posted it on the, on the scroll there, that, but uh, oh. it, the, well, I think one of the last slides you showed on the, uh, on the uh, sublet scan, you didn't have a tax. Is that just because just didn't catch it or any special reason you didn't tax that? They didn't tax it because they subletted it. It says dealer service reset system, tow to and from dealer. So, so you, it's, don't it's, tax, it's, you don't tax your sublet? Not in New York State, you don't. Oh. Uh, I mean, because I use it. You mark it up because you, you got the price mark off on it because the dealer's not charging us tax. Right, so if the dealer's not charging a tax and you're turning around and reselling it, so you would normally, add, I normally add taxes. So I mean, towing, well, I don't. Once again, this was the shop who gave me this and I'm using their thing. So, okay. you know, that's, that's, what that, that's how they charged it and that's how they do it. No problem, just curious. You know, it's the other ones I don't have it on there. So it's just this particular one I got here. Yeah, I typically, if I paid tax when I paid to pick up the car, it wasn't on my sublet. So um, I felt I went with taxing twice. It was a good question though, one to think about. Um, on that one. Do, 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 do. Um, I, again, I guess a little, I got a little sidebar message on negotiation tactics and tips for this. Um, use, use the, the P pages in the guide to estimating. Um, use ICAR's premises as well. And over and over when you actually, I encourage so many of you to not just go to the P pages when you're looking for an answer. Sit down with them like a book with a cup of coffee one morning and just read through them constantly and highlight stuff. Um, but refer back to the P pages with the adjusters and the guide to estimating that says, hey, this isn't included. And even they're telling me in several different places in the manual that I should always be referring to the OE. And so the estimating system that even you use is supporting these charges. It's been successful. And in some cases it hasn't. And the insured has to pay for it. And then the insured usually, let's say, Larry, what are we about 90%? The insured's getting reimbursed after they write a check. Nope. He's unstable. Kristen, I think you just broke up there a little bit. Oh. Um, yeah. uh, there you go. You're back now, I think. Yep. Uh, Kristen, so basically, did I was we just, lose you? Oh. Uh, I was just saying that that a lot of sometimes the insured will just say, no, we're not paying it, but the customer pays it. And then the customer is, you know, 90% of the time reimbursed for it. So. Yes, correct. You're all right. We have plenty of people who have been reimbursed without much of an issue on that um once the clients got involved i mean look if you're, you're holding the car up because of uh i don't know uh, um 150 dollars and 50 dollars an hour labor three hours of research material and another you know 30 bucks in 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 repair information so for 180 bucks you're going to hold the car up they're not going to make the customer pay that the customer needs to call and complain it's no different i think mark gabbard put up the other day on facebook you know the the problem is is the, it's not the insurance company it's the shops uh, the management who don't have uh, the knowledge or the guts to talk to the customer and tell the customer, look, this is your problem. This is how you handle it. This is what you have to call up about. No different than going to the doctor. You sign everything at a doctor's office. And one of those last few things you sign, if your insurance company doesn't pay, you're liable for whatever the doctor does. Well, because you're sick or dying or, you know, really in pain, you're going to sign that and you know they're going to come after you if your insurance company doesn't pay and you never call the insurance company to complain about it that's part of the problem so that's why you need to get the customer involved yeah exactly all right larry well thanks um we have got one more today so we'll be back okay. here in about an hour uh with matrix to talk about how you uh check and confirm positioning on suspension and, and ADAS mounting points um, like Larry mentioned, we had Jake, um, and some people with us at Florida recently for our, our winter summit and just the cars that Aztec is, is calibrating in their calibration centers, about 40% of those coming in are failing just because there's a structural problem. The brackets are in the wrong place. 
Um, you tried to put a quarter panel on and hammer out the wheelhouse, but you forgot that that really got the positioning angle off. And, and so we're going to talk about that this afternoon. All right. Thanks, great. Larry. Have a great All day. Right, thanks, guys. Right. Appreciate everyone coming in.